All right, guys, so today's video is gonna be all about goats. We're gonna do five tips that you need to be successful with your goats, whether they're babies, adults, meat, milk, pets, whatever. This is something that all goats need, and it'll get you off to a good start to make sure that your goats are happy and healthy and easy to live with. All right, so number one is gonna be your shelter. So this is what we call the Tiki Hut Shelter, and this is one of my favorite shelters for a small group of goats. And this, if you live in anywhere in the southeastern United States or anywhere that's not super cold most of the year, this is a perfect shelter. The boards are spaced out about a quarter inch, and then as the boards shrink, it gets a little bit bigger. All the pee and poop goes right up under the shelter. So with a leaf blower, we can real quickly go through and clean the shelter, as well as the goats stay super dry. You can see that we have some diatomaceous earth in there. That just helps keep the flies away, as also helps uh, blow and sweep the poop off to make Make sure that it's good. Um, I've got my two favorite babies right here, Poppins and Betty White. And I've seen upwards of 20 baby goats in there, but probably for like three or four Nigerian dwarf goats, this is the only shelter you'd need. It's up high, so it's never gonna get damp. It's three sides are protected from the wind. They've got a nice little ramp to go up. And like I said before, all the poop and pee is gonna be your main thing that you can keep them away from. Keeping them away from that pee and poop is the best thing for your goats long-term. And the number one reason you're gonna wanna keep the pee and poop away is because the pee and poop, well, the poop mainly, is where the parasites are. So if there's parasites in your goat's poop and they're living in that and they're sitting in wet hay, moldy bedding, damp conditions, then they're going to eat those parasite eggs and it's going to reintroduce the parasites into their body and pretty soon you're going to be overwhelmed with parasites. So high and dry is what we try to do with all of our goats. Now we're going to move on to number two. So the number two most important thing that you're going to want to have is food and minerals. So this overhang right here overhangs this so this stays nice and dry but the goats can't get above this to pee and poop in it and as you can see we've got these two goats down here just because we walked over here they're eating these minerals like crazy. In the United States and most countries, you cannot have a goat food that is fully formulated with enough vitamins and minerals to supply the goats. They have to have additional sources of zinc, selenium, things like that. And so we use Sweet Licks Meat Maker Mineral because it has a higher amount of zinc in it and copper. We use those and it's offered free choice. And what free choice means is that it's always available to the goats. And it's not something that you can just put out and then a year later check. You have to constantly check the minerals to make sure that they haven't gotten soiled, they haven't gotten a goat pooped in them or anything like that. You want them to be nice and loose and clean so the goats are constantly eating them and as you can see our guys are always eating them our herd of 35 goats goes through about 25 pounds of minerals a week so we have to keep them available at all times and right beside wherever your minerals are if you're feeding your goats any type of grain at all you have to worry about ruminal acidosis so you also want to keep your baking soda and this is just your plain white arm and hammer baking soda and what this allows the goats to do is if they start feeling like a little tummy ache they start feeling a little sick or their room and gets a little bit too acidic, Ugh. You're not supposed to step in it. They will eat some of this and it works like a Tums works for us. It's like an antacid. They'll lick it up and then they'll rumen and their tummy will feel a whole lot better. So that's that. All right, guys. So another thing that you really want to make sure you have is plenty of space for your goats. We've got 35 goats in about one acre of land and you don't want the goats to bully each other or get so overcrowded that they're sitting in their own fecal matter or they don't have enough room to browse. If one's not feeling well, it needs to be able to get away from the others. Um, Lila, one of our goats in here wasn't feeling well yesterday and was given some antibiotics and some Pepto-Bismol. She had a little bit of an upset tummy and now she's all better. But anytime that one goat is not feeling well, you want to be able to let them get away from the rest. Or if they're getting bullied or one's in a bad mood, flies is another thing. If they have a big enough pen and there's flies around their house or flies in one area, they can get away from that. Shade, sun, if it's cold outside and they want to lay in the sun, we like them to have access to shade and sun. But you want to make sure that you have a big pen. The number one thing that you're going to want to look for in your pen is it needs to be extremely dry. If you notice as I'm walking walking backwards, I'm kind of walking uphill. This entire pen is on an uphill incline. So any rain or water that falls in this pen immediately runs off. Not only does it keep the pen dry, but any goat poop that's in here that may be building up as it rains hard, all the goat poop washes out of the pen. You do not want those things building up in your pen. You don't want mud puddles in your goat pen. You don't want any mud, soil, dampness at all. If you have just a dry, arid goat pen, that is ideal. Obviously, you want lots and lots of shade because goats don't eat grass very well. They love trees. So when we put them in this pen, it was nice and thick and lush, but they very quickly made sure that all the trees got eaten up. And they've got everything about six foot up cleared very, very well. Ain't that right, Brandy? This is our most hateful Nubian right here. She's so angry. Why are you so angry? 
and she's retired that's why she has on a pink collar she just gets to live out the rest of her days being hateful to everybody else have we made friends a little bit no you're still angry all right so now we're going to talk about the fourth most important thing when you have goats and as you have heard everybody say it's going to be fencing because goats can get in and out of anything so fencing is going to be one of the most important things because goats are not going to stay put now normally they will kind of pick out an area once they're used to it but if you go buy goats and you bring them home they're not going to know where their home is so it's going to take them a little while to learn it now if i let my goats out they're going to stay close to home and at nighttime they're going to go back to their house kind of like chickens but when you first get them home and if you have any girls that come into heat or any bucks that are in rut they're gonna go out if something chases them or anything they're gonna run so you have to have secure fencing for your goats so what we use here is red brand fencing and it is a four inch by four inch woven wire fence and it's four foot tall and that's your typical height for any goat fence and then we also use a six foot tall t-post that is two foot down into the ground across the top of that we use the either Zariba brand or there's a couple of other brands, but it's a plastic electric wire. So that is for any goats, dogs, anything that wanna go over the fence, it shocks them. Now something additional that you can do, and what I recommend is if you don't have a super secure fence, go ahead on the inside, excuse me little baby angel. If you don't have a super secure fence, then go into about this level right here, about one foot above the ground and put you an electric line right here. Because as you can see, the fences will over time start pushing out from the goats rubbing up against it so it's extremely important that your fence maintains its security and never falls down so make sure that if they are pushing up on it you're constantly going back and twisting the wire to make sure it stays nice and snug ain't that right beetle bug you don't want to get out do you you don't want to leave me do you want to leave me you don't want to leave me little girl i love you too you're the best goat in the whole lot well sort of i mean you're like the second best lily's the best sorry all right so when it comes to protection our preferred method is livestock guardian dogs and we have great pyrenees we actually have five great pyrenees karakachan marama mixes they're just kind of mutts and they are the absolute best dog now what I would say is that the only issue you'll run into is that sometimes the dogs are escape artists sometimes they want to play with the goats kind of rough and that gets kind of annoying but I will say that it is the least hazardous to the sorry about the goats y'all it is the least hazardous option for the goats. sometimes donkeys and llamas will actually attack the goats whereas with dogs once they are at a certain age if you have two or three dogs that are able to play with each other the dogs are typically going to not harass the goats or mess with the goats badly in any way shape or form our dog we got alaska here and we got ruin panda over there and we're gonna go look at lucy and zane also but they are definitely the only thing that's really keeping our goats safe you think at two o'clock in the morning when you're sound asleep if a pack of coyotes or a pack of your neighbor's dogs comes over you really need something that's got your goat's best interest in mind and these guys love the goats to death they clean babies when they're first born and they stay with the moms their whole life so there is nothing better than a great pyrenees on a farm it does take some work to make sure that they are trained correctly and that they respect the goats they only see the vet one time a year and it, it, they are priceless they're worth their weight in gold another thing that i didn't mention on the goats that i should have so i guess this is six tips for the price of five is we use these type collars on all of our goats and our dogs so they're a breakaway a plastic breakaway collar you can get them from caprine supply we'll link that down below but caprine supply has these awesome collars and what it is is if there's too much weight on this right here like if a goat is hanging itself it will it'll snap, it'll break. And what that does is it makes sure that none of your goats are going to hang themselves. It's very, very important that they don't get hung up on a tree and die. So I tell people never, ever, ever put a nylon collar on your goats. Always put one of these plastic breakaway collars. There are some made for dogs, so maybe you can find one for dogs if you just have a few number of goats. But I would su suggest the plastic collars that are on Caprine Supply. These guys are awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching this. We definitely hope that it was some good information for you. I know that when we first got our goats, it was extremely hard to figure out what we were doing. But now that we've been doing it for about eight years, there's a few things that I just am really, really happy that we learned. And we've gone from having issues with parasite to introducing the minerals that we use now. And now we have no parasite issues using the livestock guardian dogs. So we've never lost a goat, knock on wood to predators and fencing issues, things like that. So we definitely hope that you drop a comment down below to let us know what you think of the video. And we hope to see you on the next video. Bye.